So this video spiraled. <laughs> this video quickly devolved into a hellish tornado of like historical misinformation buried under historical misinformation buried under historical misinformation and an adventure of me having to dig through that to find the truth and i'm taking you all with me i have no desire to live in the middle ages as interesting as i think they are but i think that most can agree that a pretty favorable job to have if you did need to live back then was that of the court jester or the king's fool. It seems like a sweet gig, right? You get paid to live in nice digs, wear a silly outfit, jingle around the castle miserably, and can say pretty much anything you want at almost anyone's expense with considerable immunity. At least, that's what it seems like, right? For centuries, court fools were hailed much like celebrities. Their jokes were repeated through courts and into the streets, like early soundbite memes, so much so that many of these famous jesters grew into larger-than-life legends beyond any power or comedy they ever had in real life. They were essentially often transformed into characters. I mean, that was kind of their job anyway, right? <laughs> to be a character. But there's a lot of complex issues that follow this, and few jesters of history are as good an example as the legendary Tribulé. Tribulé was a jester in the court of King Francois I of France, and he's famous for good reason. Odds are you've seen stories of his schemes floating around online in meme format. On one occasion, a furious nobleman threatened to kill him for some insult, to which Francois said that Tribulé need not worry, for he would behead anyone who kills him no more than 15 minutes after. To which Tribulé quickly rebuffed, couldn't you just behead him 15 minutes before? Another example of Tribulé's quick-wittedness, and likely the one you've heard, was a time when Tribulé went too far and couldn't help but smack that king's ass. When the king demanded an explanation, threatening to have him executed, Tribulé said, I'm sorry, my king. I mistook you for the queen. Now, regardless of whether or not Francois owned a justifiably queenly dumpy, this was unacceptable as, unlike most, insulting the queen was out of the question. So this explanation did not help, However, thinking on how loyally this jester had served him for many years, Francois offered him the chance to decide his preferred method of being executed. And the ever so witty Tribulé replied, My king, I would like to die of old age. This did lighten the mood and Francois granted his wish. He was banished from the court, but he did indeed die of old age. <sighs> what a legend, right? But. That's exactly the problem. These tales have been repeated for centuries, often by highly reliable scholars and historians. But are they true? Who really was Tribulé? A guy with basically no information to his biography with an easy reach online. And did he really, truly slap King Francois I ass? Come learn with me. But first, this video has literally killed me and I'm exhausted. So let's hear about today's sponsor for sleepy little guys, Brooklinen. I sure am a sleepy little guy. I sure wish I had some really comfortable, soft bed sheets. Hey, you look like you need some of those too. <laughs> well, boy, do I have good news for you because I got new sheets from Brooklinen and I like jokes aside, they are seriously so good. Sleepy guy that I am, I really struggled to find bed sheets that I really jived with. I always feel feel either way too hot or too cold at night, so I end up waking up like 30 times a night, which sucks when you need full brain power to be researching a 16th century court jester. Brooklinen's Lux Hardcore sheet bundle with a duvet cover, flat and fitted sheet, and pillowcases was literally perfect for me, and I've actually been able to stay asleep since using them. Brooklinen is a luxury sheets company creating high quality home goods to elevate your home, including sheets that are not only going to last a long time and through frequent washes, but are going to get softer with each wash. Not only are these 
these sheets literally so soft and comfy, but they look absolutely gorgeous. I was able to mix and match colors to fit my vibe because I love green and gold color combinations, if that's not obvious. But there's a ton of colors to choose from, so you can pick whatever vibe you love and create it. The Luxe Hardcore Bedsheet Bundle features a luxurious 480 thread count and a really pretty luminous finish. They're also OEKO Tech certified tested for harmful substances and certified to meet the strict global safety criteria of the Standard 100. Brooklinen is offering my viewers a special discount of $20 off any order over $100. Just click the link below and use my code CAS20 at checkout. So go ahead and get yourself a good night's sleep. Thank you so much to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to investigating Tribule. When you Google Tribule, of three things you are absolutely certain. First is that he was a court fool to probably King Francois I. Second, he slapped the king's ass. And three, I was deeply and irrevocably in love with him. So of course I started with his Wikipedia page and lo and behold, there's the famous story. Interesting. There is indeed a citation or two, but the second one connects to a Thought Nova article with no citations. Most sources online that cite this story will link back to this All That's Interesting article, which when you actually click on the source in this section, goes back to <laughs> fucking commonplace fun facts, which has no sources cited. Um, you may notice the links here. It, the source is itself. Uh, I don't know about you, but like <laughs> random fun fact article sites aren't exactly my idea of the bastion of reliable information. Back to that first citation. It's a book by Leonie Frida on Francis I. This is a pretty good place to start, so I grabbed my library card, borrowed the book from Hoopla, and... <laughs> well... It's this specific chapter, chapter six, A New King of France, where the story appears. Here's the problem, if I move my cursor, there is no citation footnote right here. And then if you go into the end of the book where the citations are, there's just nothing. So like, where, where, where did this come from? Now, this is a book on Francis I, not Trebule, and this is the jester's only mention in the whole book, so obviously it wasn't Frida's research priority. Back to square one. I poked around the bibliography for this chapter and continued my journey, which led me to a few new books that Frida did cite, none of which were any help whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Back to square zero. The Wikipedia page also cites a couple of other things, one being this archived Historia page from 2008, which was deleted sometime in 2016 for God knows what reason. The other is an actually helpful book, The History of Court Fools by Dr. Duran, published in 1858. Now, for obvious reasons I've talked about many times, you have got to take Victorian history books with a grain of salt because a ton of these authors didn't double check their sources or they straight up made shit up. Put a bookmark in that thought, we'll run into that later. So Dr. Duran actually cites a pretty significant book in Tribule history here, Les Deux Fous by Jacob the Bibliophile, which was the pen name of 19th century journalist Paul Lacroix, who over the last few weeks has become my mortal enemy. Luckily, Dr. Duran is pretty critical of Les Deux Fous, acknowledging that it's mostly fiction and for good reason because I went and found Les Deux Fous, published in 1830, and <laughs> oh boy. In his introduction, Paul Lacroix says essentially that his historical fiction novel, yes, that's what this is, is so good that some may consider it to be non-fiction, a historical chronicle. I made sure to confirm this with the help of my friend Claire Mead, who actually is fluent in French. Oh boy. Now, Victorian writers being pompous asses like this is nothing new to me, so I wasn't shocked at all. God, I wish I had that kind of confidence, though. My fiction writing is so good. I'm basically writing 
true history. Now, it's not really Lacroix's fault that some people confused his book for nonfiction, because in this era, I think it would be really easy to. For centuries, until literally fairly recently and even now, some historians do this really annoying thing where they fabricate conversations and biographies that no one could possibly know happened. So it was really common to read a history book and just assume that these conversations happened and must have been like written down somewhere and not really think much of it. And that's how we've ended up with so many fake quotes attributed to historical figures. And that's what we're battling with Tribule. So Les Deux Fous has proven to be one of the issues here, but nowhere in that book is there any mention of the ass slapping story. Who started that story? Where did it come from? Every book I read going down the trail repeated the same like three to five stories about Tribule. They usually repeated the stories of him spurring a horse or this story about a farting horse or the story of him asking the king to behead someone 15 minutes before or the story of his writing the king's name in the Book of Fools. But no one, no one mentioned Tribule slapping the king's ass. And who the hell would pass that story up? Speaking of the king though, which king did Tribule even serve? Because apparently we aren't sure of that either. So let's get two key things straight here before we move on. If you're unfamiliar with French royal history, you've got King Louis XII who ruled from 1498 until 1515. And then after him came Francois I who served from 1515 until his death in 1547. We know for a fact that A, Tribule died during Louis' reign and he he was very much beloved due to a funerary epitaph written by Jean Moreau, which reads, Long time after, my lord and master, Louis XII had me put in this place, cut to the quick so that the name lasts, of the truest fool that nature ever created. Nouvelle Recreation by Bonaventure de Perrier from 1565 mentions in the 1850s reprint that Tribule had a brother who was named Nicholas, who he got a job as a cook in the palace. Is it possible that Tribule's name isn't even Nicolas Febrial, as it says on his Wikipedia page, and somebody got him and his brother mixed up? It seems that way. Les Deux Fous by Paul Lacroix does indeed get them mixed up, as he says Tribule was a great baker or butcher to the crown. But we know there was indeed a Tribule serving Francois due to papers from his court listing Nicolas de Filial, brother of Tribule, and Francois Boussier, governor of Tribule, as well as the fact that a Tribule was indeed present with the king during the Italian expedition of 1515, which is the setting for many wild Tribule anecdotes. The only logical conclusion is that there were at least two tribules, and the second one had a brother named Nicholas. Jolie and Montaignon and de Rothschild, the authors of two actually solid books on tribule in the Victorian era, are all in agreement by the 1860s to 70s that Tribule must have died by 1514, or generally before the reign of Francis I at all. And therefore, pretty much anything that Bonaventure de Perrier and Lacroix attribute to him is not correct. This is based off of the epitaph of Tribule I that I read earlier, which cites the year 1509. None of the writers who lived during Tribule's time ever mention him serving King Francis I. The first time this is mentioned is decades later, in 1565, in Nouvelle Recreation by Bonaventure de Perrier, which first tells the story of the farting horse, and then Tribule beating up an officiant in the church. One day while Tribule was in front of the king, constantly chatting and showing off his nonsense, his horse let out six or eight farts, and this angered Tribule to no end. And so he immediately got off his horse, put the saddle on his back, and said to the king, Cousin, today you gave me the worst horse that ever was. He's a drunk. After he's drunk his fill, all he does is fart. By God, he'll go on foot. Ha ha, he farted in front of the king. <laughs> Which is insane because de Perrier died in 1543. So <laughs> was this added posthumously? Bonaventure de Perrier was a satirist. He wrote satire. So novel pastimes and merry tales, which is where a lot of these stories are coming from, is a collection of fables. And he's very open about it too, because I just opened tale number 92, and he literally says, since Tribule was well thought of in the best companies and his foolishness has a place in this book, 
It seemed a good idea to give him as a companion one of the best fed jokers, blah, blah, blah. He's very open about how this is fiction. It's funny to me that the two Victorian scholars who are picking apart what's true or not about Tribule attest the fact that none of this stuff that uh, de Perrier is saying is true to the fact that these events took place after the real Tribule died and not to the fact that it's literally openly satire. <laughs> which I feel like is more damning than the other thing. So at this point, it's looking like pretty much nothing in that Wikipedia article is remotely true. And it's blowing my mind that Bonaventure de Perrier died and then whoever republished his work decided to co-opt his voice to include random misinformation about Tribule. Here's the thing though, that that happened actually isn't that shocking, honestly. Because as soon as Tribule died, the name Tribule became a common nickname for any jester. In fact, there was at least one Tribule before, well, Tribule. Actually, there were even dogs owned by Charles IX named Shelley, Muguet, and Tribule. This can be attested to the fact that the origins of the name Tribule have a number of possible sources, one being the word tripo or trepan, the tool used in trepaning, an old medical procedure where a hole is drilled into the skull to cure a number of things, namely insanity. There is also the old French word tribule, meaning tormented or trampled. So the name Tribule, in all likelihood, is a pun reference to him being a madman. By all trustworthy accounts, Tribule had physical disabilities as well as mental ones. So this is also a reason why so much confusion cropped up. It's entirely possible that multiple Tribules existed and their stories, many of which are already fictional, are getting mixed up with each other like a big Tribule salad. <laughs> we know for a fact that René of Anjou had a jester named Tribule, for instance, but it's hardly the same man given that René was alive from 1409 to 1480 and our Tribule was born around the 1480s or so. It wasn't until purely on accident in the midst of trying to find a free copy of Novel Pastimes and Merry Tales by de Perrier, I finally stumbled across a really great paper by somebody just as pissed about this subject as I am in the modern era, not just the two dudes from the Victorian era. <laughs> Guillaume Berton, who is firmly of the educated opinion that rather than the main tribule being one guy who served both Francois I and Louis, that it was two tribules, one king each, who have gotten merged over the years. I think we can settle that mystery, but it doesn't really help the rest. Because there's another big issue here. A lot of these tribule stories aren't even unique to Tribule. One of the main stories attributed to him, the one where he spurs on a horse that he can't control, is copied directly from a pre-existing Italian satirical story by Ariosto, which seems to be at least partially copied from yet another story from the 12th century in the Ipomadon of Huon de Botolonde. A huge number of Tribule stories have been traced back to older Italian stories, which Aristide Jolie makes note of in La Vraie Histoire des Tribule, 1867. It is to him that we attribute, the better to engrave them in the future, the anonymous pranks. To make French, the pranks borrowed from Italian storytellers. Hold on. How to announce polka. Poggy. Poggy. That does not sound right. Pog. 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 <laughs> Pog. 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 Oh my god, no, I'm sweating. A story by Boccaccio or Pog has only good favor on this side of the mountains and only obtains letters of naturalization there on the condition that Tribule takes on their story. It becomes more obvious when there are no citations. To add even more fuel to the idea that Tribule became more of a character than a historical figure, 
is that he is used in all number of fictional stories, the most famous being Victor Hugo's Le Roi s'amuse, written in 1843. In this story, Hugo makes Cribulet more sympathetic and wise, and even gives him a daughter. A few knuckle-headed historians read this story and took it as fact, reporting in their biographies that Cribulet actually did have a daughter. He did not. An even earlier one was Francis I, a historical drama written by actress Fanny Kemble in 1832, predating Hugo's work, and predating Kemble's story is an 1807 comedy written by Madame Olimpo. In fact, literally as soon as Tribulet was dead in the ground, people started writing plays, novels, and operas with him as a character. King of early cinema himself, Georges Méliès, even made a film about Francis and Tribulet in 1907. Tribulet as a multi-use fictional character persists until modern day too. He was even included as a side character in the 2002 Jean Roland movie Fiancé of Dracula, which is a place I honestly was not expecting to encounter him, but okay. How are we holding up? I know this is kind of a lot of info, so Let's recap. Tribule, the alleged ass slapper, was actually three court jesters in the 15th to 16th centuries serving three different kings. But what was our main Tribule, the one serving Louis XII, actually like? Well, a lot about his backstory was made up. But here's what we know based on the accounts of people who knew him in life. Tribule, who had one brother named Nicolas, was born in Blois, France, where he spent his early years on the streets begging or playing bagpipes for money. This is because Tribule was physically disabled and neurodivergent. According to Jean Moreau in his Description du Voyage de Venise in the 1530s, Tribule had a small forehead and big eyes, a big nose, and a wide back. He was as wise at 30 as he was the day he was born. Lacroix takes the liberty to expand on his description. His flat and hollow chest, his bowed back, his short and twisted legs, his long and hanging arms amused the ladies, who contemplated him as if he had been a monkey or a parakeet. Ugh. Another author gives us an idea of his dress. His dress was not less eccentric than his person. In accordance with his secret occupation of purveyor of pleasures to the king, he adopted the colors of the reigning mistress and dressed in something of the fashion of his master. The justo corps was of striped blue and white silk fitting so tightly as to render his bodily deformity more conspicuous and to excite more readily the laughter of all who looked upon him for the first time. On his back, thighs, and cap were emblazoned the royal arms, and from his girdle of gilt leather hung the symbols of his office, a club, a wooden sword, and a bagpipe. So according to recent legend, apparently one day Tribule slashed the jerkin of a page boy, and the page's friends punished him by nailing him to a post by the ear, to which Francis I took pity on him, gave him a governor, that is, a keeper, and made him his personal royal fool. But. This story doesn't hold up, because the earliest telling of it comes from Desperriers Merry Tales, where it was Cayette, not Tribule, who was nailed to the post. Cayette being Tribule's co-worker, basically. They had kind of a rivalry going on. Like, you're seeing this, right? Uh I'm not like hallucinating. We actually have no idea how either Tribule came into the service of either king, but one thing is certain. The real tribulés were, as I discussed earlier, essentially kept as novelty entertainers because of their disabilities, which the court found humorous. Because they, like many other court fools, were disabled, they were able to get away with cracking these sharp jokes because people didn't take them as seriously. And this is where the long story of Tribule begins to become a little uncomfortable. The role of madmen in medieval entertainment is extremely storied and complex. I mean, the French word foo literally translates to madman, crazy, insane, lunatic, etc. Early jesters were essentially theater performers. They did a wide variety of tricks like juggling, skits, singing tales, puppetry, miming, playing instruments, circus acts, and more. A typical court fool could engage in all or none of these. By the end of the 16th century, and especially the 17th century, the court fool became a specifically costumed role of theater. His archetypes and tropes were already well known, and famous names like Tribule would be used as titles. 
but many jesters from the 15th to 16th centuries were differently abled folks, especially people with various forms of dwarfism. Although their role as often the confidants of royalty gives the idea that these jesters were highly respected, that's not 100% the case. They were viewed as exotic and often treated as pets. It's extremely disturbing. So it's interesting to see how Tribile, a person who was famously disabled in numerous ways, starts off being written about in horrible, disrespectful, and insulting ways, and once he becomes a tool character in fiction, he's transformed at once into a sneaky, wise, and intelligent character, rather than the exaggerated caricature that earlier writers made him out to be. Happening concurrently, many later jesters were not disabled or neurodivergent at all, but rather theatrical actors playing the role of a disabled and neurodivergent person in order to entertain because that's what was expected of jesters by that point. Were they perceived as anything, quote, normal, they wouldn't be afforded such immunity for their jokes. It was precisely because they were seen as foolish and mad that many jesters were able to make these jabs at the court and still keep their heads. <sighs> but that still answers the great unanswered question. Where, where did the ass-slapping story come from? Who started it? I know by now that it's not true, but who did it? Who's the culprit? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I decided to pick apart this story piece by piece any and all searching in books, databases, articles, anything for any mention of Tribule slapping ass brought up nothing but internet memes and reddit posts from the last decade. I think France was a mistake. So I moved on to the last half of the story, where Tribule asks to die of old age. And this one actually got me somewhere. First, I found it mentioned in a book called Tales of the Jesters by Robert Hill, published in 1934. I've read some really, really bad history books in the 20s and 30s, so if this is the source, I wouldn't be shocked. Alas, it's a rare book and not available online, so I hauled my ass out of my apartment over to one of the coolest places in Chicago, the Newberry Library on West Walton Street, which houses rare books and manuscripts. And they've got this book. So I sat there flipping through page by page, finally finding the mention I was hoping for. But there's no sign of ass slapping. Nay, not even a wee ass tap. No, nothing. And of course, since this is an old book, there's no citations. Back to the drawing board. I continued searching for the specific phrase that Tlibule uses in French, which is this. <laughs> and I finally found the source. You're never gonna guess where this shit came from. Go ahead. Guess. Yeah, it's a fucking history book from 1852. The Victorians strike again. And yet, and yet, no mention of ass slapping. Flames. Flames on the side of my face. It's right here. And then up here. This is the phrase that everyone says that he says. But down here, in French, it doesn't say he slapped anybody's ass. At this point, I really thought that I might hit a dead end. Like, seriously? Is there actually no answer? For real? Am I going to have to give up? By this point, it was almost 2 a.m. literally last night, and I was honestly starting to get kind of pissed off. And that's when it hit me. The answer was literally in front of me the whole time. Where is the only two significant places I've ever seen this story reported with ass slapping included? Wikipedia and Reddit. I needed to go back to the source, back to where I started. I used custom date search tools and found one of the earliest mentions of Tribule slapping ass on Reddit to this comment on a post from eight years ago. No sources. But upon digging into Reddit further, I started noticing these comments alluding to some sort of drama that had taken place. Some tomfoolery, even. Someone out there apparently edited Tribule's Wikipedia page, if this commenter is to be trusted, at least. Why didn't I think to check the Wikipedia edit history? And so here we are back at good old Wikipedia, and lo and behold, the ass-slapping story was added in mid-2007 by an unnamed user whose IP address I'm covering here. And when I went to see what other edits this person had made, there was only one. To the Assassin's Creed page. Hey, I think this person likes ass. 
I'm not saying that an Assassin's Creed fan is inherently not qualified to teach history. As far as gamers go, Ass Creed fans are probably the most likely to be history nerds in the first place, but I mean, <laughs> well, this is, I'm 99% certain, the first mention of Tlibulae slapping ass coming from a random unsighted edit to Wikipedia from an anonymous gamer then perpetuated on Reddit. An actual citation that isn't fucking Thought Nova wasn't added until years later when Leonie Frida included the story in her book on Francis I. And Frida didn't cite her source either. The odds of her having simply heard this story from the very Wikipedia page that her book is used as a source on creating a weird circle is extremely high. I think it's safe to conclude, as devastated as I am, <sighs> that Tlibule never slapped the king's ass. He was not banished from the kingdom, he was not nailed to a post by his ear, and he probably didn't do most of those other silly stories either. Both of the real Tlibule's probably were hilarious in real life of their own merit, but it's hard to say how much of the amusement people found in them was just raw ableism. So, um... <laughs> where does this even leave us? Well, I guess the thing is, is it actually hurting anyone to believe that Tlibule slapped the king's ass? No, I mean, it's fucking hilarious. It was one of my favorite history stories before I ruined my own fun. But the issue is, sometimes these historical memes and over-the-top stories are actually harmful. In Julie Dobini's case, they were used to defame her, and it wasn't until recently that the stories were seen as cool and badass. For others, fake quotes can alter the way we view their life stories, or overshadow real things that they accomplished. And in general, I think that situations like this are a testament not only to how easy it is to spread historical misinformation online and people unquestioningly believing it, but also to just how difficult it is to debunk these things when there's centuries and centuries of shit to dig through. In another language, no less. I had time and interest to do this because this is my job, but who the fuck else does? I went into this video thinking that I'd be able to tell you these silly stories and then be done. Easy video in the books. And honestly, I probably could have, and most of you wouldn't think anything of it. But the fact is, that would be dishonest. I noticed that something was fishy about this story, and I can't in good conscience serve you information when I have a sinking feeling that there's nothing but lies backing it up. So I've dragged you with me on this journey through the annals of history, a process that isn't pretty or fun most of the time. You've gotten a peek behind the curtain at my madness every time I make a video. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed learning with me. I think I've really learned a lot about who Tribule wasn't. We may never know who he truly Really was. That history is lost to time. So until next time, wash thy hands, wear thy mask, and don't forget to update your book of fools. Mm -hmm.